Welcome to Fireside Giants. My name is Alex with my co-host here, Anthony Rivardo. Been a little sporadic the past couple days. He's doing solos, I'm doing solos, but today we're doing duos. And today we're getting after the Kevin Zeitler uh, situation and trying to figure out some creative ways that we can get around cutting him and getting no value back because as we know, the Giants had the 32nd ranked pass efficiency uh, unit in the NFL in 2020, which is absolutely terrible. And I keep hearing the argument, Anthony, it's, it's really starting to get on my nerves. We can't get much worse. My friends, we can. Don't get it twisted. We can get much, much worse. If you don't think last year was bad, do you not remember 2019? Do you not remember 2018 with Eric Flowers, Bobby Hart? Do I have to? Do I really have to explain how much worse it can get? Do you remember Eli Manning? We thought this guy was going to die out there. We were terrified. You know, this is not a, a normal situation where you're just getting rid of a guy and it's not going to get that much worse. It can get a lot worse. You know, it, it's it's not good, guys. It's not good, Anthony. And before we dive into Kevin Zeidler, how we think we might be able to creatively get around cutting him and maybe supplementing his loss, trying to get some actual value from this situation. How are you doing today, my friend? Well, that's a loaded question for me on this particular day. But anyway doesn't matter let's get into Kevin Zeitler man when I saw that news that the Giants were shopping Kevin Zeitler I'm like okay but then I read that they're going to cut him if they can't trade him oh my gosh I'm so frustrated with that I think that is just so stupid I think that's just you know they tried to do that um with what's his name Eric Flowers right they tried to trade him but nobody wanted him so they cut him and then he goes on and signs somewhere else and actually becomes a competent starter for the Miami Dolphins right like the Giants, man, I don't understand. Why would you put that out there that you're going to cut him if nobody trades for him? Now who is going to trade for him? Who is actively going to pursue this guy as a trade asset, right? So whatever, that's neither here nor there. When we talk about the options that they truly have for Kevin Zeitler, I don't think that it's necessary that they have to just you know, move on from him. I think there's plenty of things that they can do to keep him on the roster. We talk about this offensive line. We talk about how bad it is, how bad the interior is. And yet our best player on the offensive line plays in the interior. And we talk about how bad the interior of the offensive line is. So losing him, yeah, it can get much worse. And it absolutely will if we lose Kevin Zeitler and we don't find a competent replacement for him. Now, I understand there's quite a few players out there, but you can't guarantee that you're going to be able to replace him with the player that you want to, to replace him with. Because there's a market for every player, and there's different teams that are going to want these players, and a lot of these teams are going to have a lot more money than the New York Giants do, right? Because we are really struggling with this cap space right now. That's why we're talking about cutting Kevin Zeitler. So, interesting situation. Kind of a frustrating one as well for me, but... You know, I'm ready to get into it, Alex. You came up with a few ways that we can make this Kevin Zeitler thing work, and I'm curious to uh, hear what you have to say and start discussing it. Yeah, absolutely. Before we dive into this, I do want to give you some insight into you know how good Kevin Zeitler really is because that's an important part of this discussion. And a lot of people are saying you know he's old, he's washed, got to get rid of him. Um, you know, and I get it. I get that the 12 million dollars you're going to save from cutting him is a good amount of money that we need that money right now because, of course, we're looking to retain Leonard Williams, we're looking to retain Dalvin Thomason. But here's the reality: Kevin Zeitler was the 23rd best pass protector among 74 eligible guards last year per PFF. For context, Shane Lemieux was the worst. He was 74 out of 74 with a minimum number of snaps. Um, are we really going to put all of our eggs in a basket that is Shane Lemieux at guard and, and you know, not re re replace Kevin Zeitler? Because let's say they get rid of Zeitler. Now you have Will Hernandez, Shane Lemieux, and you just roll with them. You don't replace him. You have the 74th. You have the worst pass blocking uh, guard in the NFL. Um, and Ze Zeitler ranked 30th overall in run blocking. He was the highest rated lineman in every major category this past season. And in 2019, he was the sixth best guard in the NFL with a minimum of 400 snaps sixth best guard that was his second year in pat Shermer's scheme okay now we're looking at a new scheme with jason garrett a, a brand new scheme brand new run blocking scheme two new faces next to him he has nick gates a brand new center next to him he has cam fleming and matt parrot next to him and they're rotating you know and, and no offensive weapons for Dale Jones to work with no saquon barkley the whole season you know this is a guy who is very capable of being a quality uh, guard just because he had a down year this past year, which actually wasn't down, it was above average, you know, just because he was a little bit worse than he usually is, that doesn't mean he's terrible. That just means that they put absolute garbage around him. You know, he just wasn't in the right place to succeed. So, look, this is this is the reality. If they do keep him, he will count $14.5 million in cap 
in 2021, which is an astronomical number, unacceptable. We cannot keep him at that number. That is something we have to get out of the way early. That is a number we cannot keep him on. If they cut him, they'll only save 12 million, which is a good amount. You can roll that over into Leonard Williams, Dalvin Thomas, and what, whatnot. But here's the problem. With the expectation that you cut Kevin Zeidler, which is $12 million saved, and you cut Nate Solder post-June 1st, which is $10 million saved, you have $22 million that you're saving. The Giants right now have, are spending the third most on their offensive line, the third most, and have the worst offensive line in pass blocking in the entire NFL. Tell me how that it makes sense. We have the third highest amount of money that we're spending on the offensive line, and Dave Gettleman promised us he would fix his offensive line. He has not done so in three years, and now we're sitting here talking about you know, we have to get rid of players who are still going to have cap implications against us, you know, and it's just a disaster. It's a disaster. And I hate having to sit here and talk about this again um, and how we can now creatively deal with Kevin Zeitler's contract because we have no choice but to cut our best offensive lineman, our most consistent guy. It's unacceptable. And I cannot believe we have to, we, we really have to let Dave Gettleman continue to solve this problem that he clearly is unqualified to do, um, despite having a couple nice draft picks in the past. Um, but... Let's jump into to Kevin Zeitler. I, I really, um, I'm excited to talk about some creative ways to actually get him uh, to, you know, at least extract some value from a player of his quality. And the first thing on the list is to extend Kevin Zeitler two to three years. So essentially, it's one more year in his deal. Tear that up, just throw it away, throw it in the garbage. Extend Kevin Zeitler two to three years. That allows you to extend, you know, spread that cap hit over a couple seasons and give him a nice guaranteed signing bonus. The guaranteed signing bonus is the trick in this entire thing because that money is guaranteed on signing. It really gives him the, the comfort of saying, okay, at least I know I'm going to get a guaranteed signing bonus. That money is mine on day one. You know, I get that money day one. As for the Giants, it still has cap implications. It's a way to lower the cap hit um, and really keep the dead money low. That's the big thing. We don't want any dead money from Kevin Zeller moving forward. So you have you have the, the guaranteed signing bonus, and that is prorated over a couple of years. So let's say that the signing bonus is $10 million over two years. That signing bonus would be spread $5 million this year and $5 million next year. But if it's a three-year deal, it's $3.33 million, $3.33 million, $3.33 million. That's kind of the concept behind it. And it allows you to keep that dead money low and it allows you to keep the cap hit low. But it allows him to feel good about the contract because he's getting guaranteed money. Now, the idea here is if the Giants decide, okay, we're going we're gonna to trade Kevin Zeitler next year. His cap hit's low this year. We lowered it a significant amount. We can spend the money elsewhere that we're saving from his from his restructured contract. We can spend it on Leonard Williams, whatever it might be. Um, but let's say they want to trade him next year. They can do that. They can say, okay, he's still he's still you know two two years left on his deal. They signed him to a three year deal. Still two years left. Let's trade him. Get some value back. Now we get some draft capital back. So the essential thing is they're still on the hook for the signing bonus. Oh, that's prorated over those two or three years. They're still on the hook for that. But you can make the argument that they're really that signing bonus is actually just buying a draft pick because you're still consuming that money, that cap hit for the signing bonus, but you get a draft pick out of it by extending him. So that's kind of an, an idea that I that I came up with that would be good for this situation specifically because you really need to lower that cap hit. You guarantee him money so he's happy. Um, he's happy with it. And, you're, and really the reality is nobody's going to trade for a 31-year-old guard that's going to make $14.5 million next year. It's really only $12 million because the Giants are on the hook for two point five in dead cap. Who the hell is going to trade for a 31-year-old guard that's going to count $12 million against the cap in COVID cap era? That's not going to happen. So the Giants really have no choice but to either restructure or cut him. This is a, a good scenario where they can keep him. They don't have a massive gaping hole at right guard. And they can try and get draft capital out of it in the future. What do you think about this, Anthony? I like the the idea of extending Kevin Zeitler because, you know, he is our best offensive lineman. He's a really solid player. He's consistent. He's healthy for the most part. You know, he's only missed a couple of games with us, right? So he's a really good player. Great pass protector. You know, isn't like a dominating run blocker. But... He does what he needs to do, and he does it better than anybody else on the offensive line, right? So I love the idea of extending Kevin Zeitler, um, lowering this year's cap hit. 14 million cap hit, that's way too high. You know, the Giants can't afford that. They can't do that. He's not even worth that, right? He's not, you know? So I would love to extend him. You know, 31 years old, everyone wants to point to that and say he's an aging offensive lineman. Why should we keep him? Let's get young. It's like, well... 31 isn't that old for an offensive lineman. Offensive linemen typically can play into their mid to late 30s. So if you do extend him two more years, maybe three more years even, I don't think that's unreasonable. And then, of course, you do give yourself the 
flexibility to where you can trade him next year or even in the middle of this season if you just feel like uh, we don't even care anymore, we just want to get rid of him, right? Depending on what you do in the draft. Now, it's unfortunate because, you know, we're heading into the free agency period just next week, right? Maybe two weeks from now. Then the following month, we have uh, the draft, right? So we have to make a decision now that sets us up for the draft, right? So if we're going to keep Kevin Zeitler, that's going to change our plans in terms of who we decide to draft in maybe the second or even first round. Um, and then if we decide to lower his cap hit, that could also have implications because that's when that trade value comes in, right? Because if the Giants have somebody that they're grooming for the position, whenever they feel like that person's ready to take over, that's when they can trade Kevin Zeitler in this scenario where you do extend him two to three years. So that's personally, if, if I had any uh, say in this, I don't. If I could make this decision myself, I would do one of two things. I would either extend Kevin Zeitler a couple of years, get that cap hit low, or I would cut him now, but not really cut him, just bring his cap hit down. Tell him we're going to cut you from this contract and sign you to a new one three hours later, get you back on for this season, but at a much lower cap hit, um, or maybe even at a cut him from this contract, then give him a two, three year contract after that. I think that's really what we're talking about there because this is a guy we need around. We need a player like this on our offensive line, a good, consistent player, because we don't have that in any of the other four spots. Um, yeah, we have a lot of potential with Andrew Thomas. You can say we got a lot of potential with Kevin, or, I mean, Nick Gates and with Matt Pear even, but right tackle is a huge question mark. Um, and then at left guard, I know a lot of you listeners and a lot of Giants fans are really high on Shane Lemieux. I'm not one of those people personally. Um, I just don't see it, enough traits in pass protection to see him really panning out in his second season in the NFL. I think he needs longer to develop. So for me, I think we need to keep Kevin Zeitler. I don't think we can afford to let him go unless we have a very competent replacement, but that's hard to find uh, in this league. So for me, I'm either extending him two to three years on this current contract and lowering that cap hit and pushing the can down the road, or I'm cutting him from this one, signing him immediately to a two to three year deal with a much lower cap hit. Yeah, look, if I'm Dave Gettleman and Joe Judge, I'm going up to Kevin Zeitler and saying, you have an option here. This is your ultimatum, essentially. Either you agree to a reconstructed contract that lowers your cap hit exponentially, or we're just going to cut you and you're going to have to change your location, you're going to have to move your family, you're going to have to move out of New York, and you're going to get less money anyway. You know, no team is signing him to $12 million right now. Nobody. I guarantee you nobody is signing him to $12 million right now. If anything, he's going to make 8 to 10 So if I'm the Giants, I'm going to be like, hey, Either we tear up your contract right now and you stay in New York and you and you know you just stick around and we lower your cap it exponentially, or you can test your luck on the market where people are not spending money on veteran right guards right now. That's that's kind of what I would do. Question for you, Alex. Realistically, if the Giants trade Kevin Zeitler, what do you think they could get for him? Like if they were to make a deal. Now, granted, I'm sure if they made a deal, it would, part of the stipulations of that deal would be that he gets a new contract when he gets traded. Right? Somehow the cap hit goes down. But what do you think they could realistically get for him? Right now? If they traded him and his cap hit right now? Um, th that's not going to happen. They're not going to trade him with this cap hit. But let's say in the deal, in the trade, you know, he, he agrees to take a lower cap hit or change his contract somehow. Okay, okay. You can do that. So the Giants, the Giants would probably have to consume some of that money. Um, they're already on the hook for $2.5 mm -hmm. But if, if that was the case and a team was, was like, okay, well, you know, if you consume that money maybe a fifth round pick that's that's the highest i think they could probably get out of him maybe a fifth round pick um i don't know if his value is like exponential right now because he is aging but it's better than nothing you know it's, it's similar to like kind of what they did with marcus golden not in the sense of a free agent tender but just mm. you know those fifth round picks you know sometimes you can get good players darius slayton's a fifth round pick shane lemieux who started half our season last year is a fifth round pick darnay holmes is a fourth round pick you know you never know if you get a guy who can fit your scheme somebody falls somebody always falls you can get a good player um, in the back end of the draft. We don't even have a fifth-round pick, so, by the way. So there's yeah. there's another thing. So so then I guess my follow-up to that would be, would you be willing to give up Kevin Zeitler for a fifth-round pick? Would you be willing to take that hit onto your offensive line, losing that much talent for a fifth-round pick in return? No. I wouldn't. I, I think he's worth more than a fifth-round pick because the impact a fifth-round pick is going to have is so irrelevant to Daniel Jones and not being murdered next year. I don't want to it, see Daniel Jones funny. die. <laughs> it's funny because you say, like, he's worth more than a fifth-round pick, and it's like I agree, but at the same time, I don't, right? Like, I don't think trading for him, I don't know, an NFL team, I probably wouldn't give up a fifth-round pick, but for the Giants, he's definitely more valuable than a fifth-round pick because that's the offensive the thing. line is just so bad. 
So his per- well, that's personal value, exactly, our personal value attached to Kevin Zeitler is much higher than it is for any other team. So basically, I go through all this to say, reality check, Giants fans, we're not going to get anything for Kevin Zeitler. He's only important to us because our offensive line is so, so bad. So realistically, trading him is a really tough sell. I don't see it happening. It's the only way that I'm okay with this, though, because we need to get something in return for Kevin Zeitler. I don't want to see them just cut him and let him walk away. If they cut him, I want them to just sign him back to a cheaper contract. That's a common thing that we see take place all over the NFL. And I think that's actually a realistic possibility can, considering COVID's going on. He's probably not going to want to relocate, and I don't think the Giants are so cruel to force him to relocate either, and I think that they actually do like Kevin Zeitler and want to keep him around. They just got to make the money work, so. Look, I love Kevin Zeitler. Not only is he a, he's a great guy, but he's healthy all the time. He doesn't miss games. You know what I mean? Like, knock on wood, but he's he's reliable, and he's very, very strong, and he can move guys in the blocking. He's a good pass protector. He's their most experienced veteran. On a very, very young offensive line, you need to be careful with putting too much youth there. And if you cut Nate Solder, you cut Kevin Zeitler, and now you have um, an offensive line who's one of the le- they spending the least amount on the on that unit. It's not that's not entirely good. Let's say the Giants take all that money and they roll it over into, into Dalvin Thomason and Leonard Williams. Now they're spending about thirty-five million dollars on the interior defensive line over three players, and about twenty-five million dollars on five players in the offensive line. That's unacceptable when you're trying to make DJ your franchise quarterback. This is his make or break year, in my opinion. You still need that rookie contract for the quarterback. And if Dale Jones, if they're not gonna give him what he needs, if they're not gonna give him time in the pocket, they're just writing his his death wish. You know, they're just writing him off the team. Um, and they're going to have to go out and find another quarterback next year or the year after that. This is not a scenario where they have the – they should be very, very, very careful about how they manage Daniel Jones right now because if they really think he is a franchise quarterback, they need to give him the pieces to do so. You know what I mean? Like think about all the guys like Deshaun Watson um, and whatnot. Like he had DeAndre Hopkins. You know, he had uh, Laramie Tunsil. I think you look at Sam Darnold. You know, look at Sam Darnold. I think on a better team, he would have been a very good quarterback, but he was absolutely destroyed by the Jets' inept. Just their inability to put good offensive line around him, put good wide receivers around him, playmakers, give him time in the pocket. He could have been a better quarterback. He could have been somebody that was a serviceable starter in the NFL, and he still could be. But the reality is we saw what what they did to him, and the Giants are doing the same thing to Daniel Jones with no playmakers, no offensive line. Um, They're boosting up their defense when this is an offensive league. Like, what the hell are they doing? You know what I mean? This this could be a major problem for the Giants if they let Kevin Zeitler go and they don't replace him with somebody of quality. That leads me to my next option, though. So the alternative could be something um, like this. They cut Kevin Zeitler. They save the $12 million, right? They save the $12 million. They say, all right, instead of spending $12 million on Kevin Zeitler, we're going to go out and find a cheaper option who can at least replicate some of his production, maybe not totally um, replicate his efficiency, but at least a fraction of it and just hold it down um, and, and keep that la- that cap hit low. That way they have a little bit more money to spend. Maybe they, f- they, si- they sign someone for 7 to $9 million dollars. Um, and you know they have that extra three four million dollars to roll over into another contract. That is where a guy like Trey Turner comes into play, in my opinion. Trey Turner is expected to be released by the San Diego or the Los Angeles Chargers, rather. And just a year ago, he was a one for one swap. Um, you know, this is this is an interesting scenario actually because the Carolina Panthers traded Trey Turner to the to the Chargers one one for one for Russell Okung, who was basically coming off a major heart injury like a major heart problem 30 years old major heart problem missed 10 games the year before you know like i don't know they must have really not wanted trey turner if they were willing to trade him for russell okung so trey turner is now about to be cut i think his best case scenario was he plays on a one-year deal and then compounds that into a multi-year deal after 2020 so the giants might be saying okay let's cut kevin zeitler and let's go a good look to trey turner who's a gettleman draft pick let's sign him for like six seven million dollars save um, five six million, and just have Trey Turner play there because we know he can fit. He, we know he can fit. That's Gettleman's guy, and you know he's he's been a Pro Bowler in the past. What do you think about Trey Turner there? Do you think he would take a, a one year deal because no one's going to give him a multi year contract right now, especially coming off of one when nobody wanted him? You know, so like what are the, what happens now with him? Do you think he would sign for a cheaper deal with the Giants? 
I think Trey Turner is an interesting name to throw out there. I'll even throw out a couple other names. Um, Andrew Norwell, another former Panther, former Dave Gettleman draft pick, who looks like he's in the same situation as Kevin Zeitler. The Jaguars are trying to trade or eventually cut Andrew Norwell. Andrew Norwell, I believe, is a former All-Pro. He was really good at one point. It's kind of fallen off, but he's been playing in Jacksonville, so that's kind of expected, right? Players kind of fall off when they go to Jacksonville. Um, so maybe he can have a real nice bounce back with the Giants. You know, Maybe the Giants are able to you know, move on from Kevin Zeitler, sign one of those two guards, Trey Turner um, or Andrew Norwell. They got the Dave Gettleman connection, which is interesting. Um, that sometimes works out for us, like it did with James Bradbury. Sometimes it doesn't work out because there have been players in the past, um, Steve Smith, D'Angelo Williams, who have openly spoken out against Dave Gettleman and said that they hated working with Dave Gettleman, right? So it goes both ways. You know, it's a relationship. It's a business built on relationships is the NFL, right? So um, if Trey Turner has a good relationship with Dave Gettleman, maybe he'll want to come play for the Giants. If he doesn't, don't expect it to happen, right? So, you know, it's very dependent when we make that Dave Gettleman connection thing. Um, it's very dependent on what the relationship is, and we just don't know that. So I'll even throw out one more name, Gabe Jackson. He was cut by the uh, Las Vegas Raiders. He's a starting right guard, pretty solid player. He's had a lot of really nice years in the NFL. He could be another option. So, yeah, the Giants. If they do cut Kevin Zeitler, there are replacement opportunities for them in free agency. But you have to keep in mind, we're not the only team in the NFL that has problems on the offensive line. And we're one of the only teams that has problems with, we're not one of the only teams, we are a team that has problems with money right now. We have problems on the offensive line and problems with money. There are teams that don't have problems with money and have problems on the offensive line. That'll be easier for them to find these players and convince them to take a contract with them than it will be for us. So it could be really difficult for the Giants to sign these guys because offensive linemen, typically there's a few teams that want each offensive lineman. So the Giants are either going to have to pay up or, you know, give them a real nice sales pitch. So while I like the idea of, you know, having these fallback plans with Trey Turner, Norwell, or Gabe Jackson, I just think it's a risk, you know, cutting Kevin Zeitler and then planning to sign one of these guys. You can't really plan to sign somebody who isn't already on your team because you don't know what they want to do or where they want to sign. He, Trey Turner might already have a team in mind that he wants to sign with. As long as they give him a contract offer, he's going to go sign there. You never know. So you can't really plan for these kind of things, and that's what makes it so difficult. And that's why, for me, I just think that cutting Kevin Zeitler is a bad idea in general. So um, while, yeah, these are good names, Trey Turner especially, I think is a really intriguing name to point out, and Andrew Norwell as well. I just think... Um, it's kind of almost unrealistic to assume that one of these guys is just going to want to sign with us because we have that need when, you know, realistically, they're going to be stepping into a pretty messy situation with a team that doesn't have a lot of money to throw around. Yep. I mean, we're in a tough spot, guys. We're in a tough spot because we don't have any money. <laughs> we have a bunch of really bad contracts we have to let go of, and we're going to have to make some really, really tough decisions, whether it be letting a guy like Dalvin Tomlinson walk. I think Leonard Williams is their prized guy. They want to keep him. Uh, D team might be the one to get the the axe, and it would be really unfortunate because he's a great player and a great guy and really a consistent threat on defense. Um, but the reality is, we need to put more off, more money into our offensive line. Um, if we do cut Zeitler, I think they're going to have to find a stopgap for one year. They're going to sign a guy to a one year deal. Um, it's going to be someone like Trey Turner. It's going to be someone like Andrew Norwell, but he's more of a left guard. And it's going to be someone like Gabe Jackson. You know, th there's a couple guys that are going to be on the market who are going to be looking for one-year deals because player because teams aren't signing multi-year deals right now. Um, there's going to be so many players, like I said in the last episode, it's going to be a bloodbath in free agency. Um, people are going to be cut. So many players are going to be taking one-year deals. It's going to be unbelievable. Um, so this is could be this is probably what the Giants are looking at right now. We're just going to cut Siler, save the money, sign a guy to six, seven million dollar deal who's probably better than. Um, what his his actual value is, but he needs to take a one year deal because he's he just got cut, um, and then they're just gonna just survive for one year, and then hopefully the cap goes up, they have more money next year, and then they can sign a multi year deal. That's the concept. But here, this actually might be my more preferred avenue. Um, this is the third option that I came up with, and the idea is to rip up the contract for Kevin Zeitler, extend like we told you before, um, use the signing bonus method, and really spread that cap hit over a couple seasons, keep the dead money low. Um, and that way, you know, you don't have to overspend on him. You can keep the cap hit low, so that way you can keep, you know, spending money in other positions. But in this scenario, I think the Giants draft an offensive guard in the second round and let him compete. You know, let him compete for left guard. Um, we've talked about Wyatt Davis from Ohio State as a really good option for this scenario. Um, obviously, you have Creed Humphrey, Landon Dickerson. There's a couple guys the Giants could target in the second round. Really, really deep offensive guard class, um, especially once you get to those second, third rounds. So the Giants could look to the second round, 
get a guy like Wyatt Davis, say, okay, you play left guard for now, um, and then we're going to transition you to right guard. He's projected as a starting right guard on day one. But you could say, okay, Kevin Zeitler and you know uh, Wyatt Davis, you guys maybe will compete. We'll have you guys compete at right guard. Whoever loses goes over to left guard. Or we'll have you guys interchange. We'll rotate you during uh, training camp. We'll ro- rotate you during spring training. Or not spring training, rather, but preseason. Um, and get you guys comfortable with left guard. So you guys can rotate there, see what see what uh, combination works out. In that way, once you get to 2020, you have a little bit more money, a little bit more flexibility. You can either keep Kevin Zeiler if, if it works out. But if it doesn't work out, you trade him. You can trade him next year for a low cap hit. A team will want him um, next season when the cap goes up. They have a little bit more flexibility. And his cap hits low because it's an entirely new contract. Um, and you can get some draft capital back. So that's my preferred uh, way of going about this, lowering his dead cap it and using the draft to create competition instead of using free agency and signing a one-year deal on a player who doesn't know our scheme, doesn't know our offense, doesn't know Daniel Jones, and really is trying to learn the whole thing again. I think that's just setting yourself back, and Daniel Jones is going to feel it. You know, We have to protect Daniel Jones from everything right now because this is the year we need him to take a big step, and getting rid of Kevin Zeidler is going to really hurt his progression, in my opinion, and I, I think using the draft to supplement that uh, would be best-case scenario. Yeah, always want to build through the draft. If you can, that's the number one priority, right? Building through the draft, not building through free agency. I saw a chart recently on Twitter that was really interesting. The teams that have spent the most money in free agency have like the lowest winning percentage in the past like five years. So um, Giants have spent quite a bit. Um, But looking at the interior offensive line class uh, in this year's draft, a lot of really solid names being thrown out there. You mentioned Wyatt Davis. You know I'm very, very high on Wyatt Davis. I love Wyatt Davis. His pro comparison is Kevin Zeitler. I think that's interesting enough. I think that he'll be a perfect fit for the Giants. I don't think he's going to make it to us in the second round, though. You know, picking 11 or 10th in the second round, we actually have uh, the flip of the pick. Not sure if everybody's aware of that. We have the 10th pick in the second draft because we had the same record as Dallas, so they got the tiebreaker for the first round but that means the second round we get that one they get the third so that's an interesting thing to keep in mind so we'll be picking ahead of Dallas in the second round um but I don't see why Davis falling that far as badly as I want him to like really really badly because I'm really high on him as a prospect but I do think a guy like Landon Dickerson you mentioned him as well Alabama prospect he played like pretty much every single position on the offensive line um and I think that they're projecting him to be a starter uh start or center in the NFL but he can move to guard, and that that's completely fine. He's, he's played got multiple the experience, he's center, played, right guard, and right tackle. Yeah, he's played multiple positions, so he's got the um, experience doing that. I definitely think that he could be a starting guard for the Giants. So, in terms of the interior offensive linemen in this year's class, there's a lot to like, and there's a lot of prospect that the Giants should consider um, drafting now. That doesn't mean that they should cut Kevin Zeitler and move on. I like what you laid out there, right, where they keep Kevin Zeitler and then they add one of these guys in as competition and more, you know, maybe not even as competition. Maybe they can just be groomed, right? And we mentioned that where maybe we could trade Kevin Zeitler midseason depending on where we get his cap number down to, right? So maybe we could do that and have one of these rookies playing behind him, learning, oh, they've got the scheme in week seven. Let's trade Kevin Zeitler. You know, that's a possibility. So I think that the Giants absolutely, I've been advocating for this really heavily in the past few weeks second round I think the Giants should really try and go interior offensive line third round the latest I think they have to go offensive line within the first three rounds Um, it's just a problem that we can't seem to get fixed but we absolutely need to try to get it fixed as soon as possible for the sake of Daniel Jones and his development so I would love to see them get a guy like Wyatt Davis in the second round but there's other names as well that are really exciting to me and um, I think the Giants should really prioritize interior offensive line in rounds two and three Yep, and we'll we'll take a look at some of these guys in the coming days, um, just potential options that they could, you know, kind of execute this with, whether it be Wyatt Davis, Lander Dickinson. Actually, I really do want to check them out. Um, and Creed Humphrey, another one. So, as always, guys, thank you so much for tuning in to Fireside Giants, um, you know, breaking this down with us. Let us know in the comments section which option you prefer, uh, number one, two, or three. I'll just overview them really quickly. The number one is to extend Kevin's other two to three years, tear up the current deal, including heavy, heavy signing bonuses, spread it out over multiple years. Trading him could be a good plan, low dead money, and essentially buying a draft pick. Um, you know, with that spreading out of the of the signing bonus. Then number two, cut, save twelve million, and then go and try to find a supplement one year cheap deal, um, just a cheaper guy who can just hold it down for one year. Um, the third option is rip up the contract, extend, use the draft 
um, to try and create a competition, a position battle more or less, and then hopefully get two guys who you know can work off each other and really build each other up, and they find two starters after it. Um, I'm okay with them holding on to Will Hernandez and Shane Lemieux as depth pieces. I don't, I don't think they're necessarily starters. Um, they might try to force them into that, but I don't want to force bad players to be starting players. You know, this is the same concept as we're just giving out starting positions these days. You know what I mean? Like, Darius Slayton struggled last year, and he, you know, didn't have anyone to supplement him with. Um, you know, we saw guys struggle. Evan Ingram dropping passes. They didn't have anyone to supplement him with. Um, it, it's tough. It really is tough when you don't have good players that, uh, you know, you have no choice but to roll with bad ones or mediocre ones or guys that are struggling. And not to say that any of them are bad, but they were just struggling at the time. Um, but this is just the reality the Giants are in right now. Hopefully things get better. I'm trying to remain positive, go through the avenues. But the Kevin Zeller being cut thing really scares the crap out of me. It scares the crap out of me because of Daniel Jones um, not having the proper protection. But as always, guys, thank you so much for tuning into Fireside Giants. Make sure to subscribe below on YouTube. Make sure to hit the notification button. And make sure to turn on the notifications on Apple and Spotify. We will catch you guys on the next video.